Hey everyone, so today I just kind of wanted to fill you in a little bit on how my trip went from Arizona to New York. Tell you a little bit about what took place. I didn't do a ton of filming because it was kind of a rush trip, but I did want to fill you in on how things unfolded. And also I wanted to kind of fill you guys in on what it's like traveling in the United States right now, if that's something you're thinking about doing. I know a lot of you already are and I have seen on the Facebook page. Uh, that some people were wondering what it's like out there right now. So I'm going to give you a little bit of my experience on what that kind of looks like uh, with everything going on in the world right now. So stick around. So like I said, today I'm going to fill you in a little bit on my trip and then we're going to talk about what it's like logistically traveling in the United States right now with the virus and everything going on. Uh, this is just from my experience and of course you have to make your own decisions on whether you want to travel or not uh, but i'm just going to tell you a little bit about what's different right now so as far as the trip out here uh, my friend bob and i left phoenix and we took about about seven days to do the trip the first three days we were just on the highway uh, not really stopping much and just trying to make use of the good weather we were getting uh, we, we weren't sure if we were going to hit any rain and we were trying to do the whole trip in about a week. Uh, Bob had a new grandbaby on the way and I was trying to get back to see family, so we definitely weren't out sightseeing. After about three days on the highway though, we had both kind of had it. Uh, it was just, it's stressful, it's exhausting. We were doing 500 plus miles a day, uh, which isn't a ton, but day after day, you know, it just kind of wears on you. So we decided to get off the highway a little bit around Kansas and Missouri. We started finding some back roads to take. It was really beautiful. Uh, you know, we found some really nice scenic routes and, and we had a pretty good time those, those couple of days just making our way from, you know, once we got over the Mississippi, just kind of enjoying that. Uh, something really cool was that uh, for me to have been to all 48 of the United States, the contiguous United States, I was missing two states and those were Kansas and Missouri. So I was able to check those off my list on this trip. That was a pretty cool accomplishment. And another cool thing that happened on this trip was my bike rolled over the 100,000 mile mark. Uh, so that's pretty neat and I'll be talking more about that very soon. Uh, that's been a long time coming. The first 100,000 miles on this bike took a lot longer than I thought it would, uh, but I got there. So that's pretty cool. Um, for those of you that are familiar with what the name 40 times around means which is now called FTA Adventures what it means is a million miles so for me to have done the hundred thousand I'm like tenth of the way there uh, on this bike uh, of course previous bikes before that I have probably another hundred thousand miles on top of that but but just for this bike I'm at a hundred thousand so that's pretty cool so we got to Missouri I think we we're kind of coming through Kentucky and Bob's bike was starting to act up it had been an issue before that we thought was a clutch problem uh, because it was just making a racket whenever he came out of first gear and it seemed like it was connected to the clutch I had gotten on it and ridden it a few times and just by talking about it with him that's kind of what we were coming up with uh, once we got probably in Kentucky I think or maybe Missouri I got on the bike one more time and I, I was looking at what was going on. I had him driving around a parking lot to try to see like where is this noise coming from and we determined that it's actually his chain. Uh, so I'm looking at things and it looks like his chain's a little loose and I'm still not really sure why it's making this particular noise. So I have him drive around the parking lot and I'm just looking at the chain trying to see what's going on and I can see that it's bouncing as soon as the chain leaves the, the drive gear, the driven gear. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's kind of bouncing the chain when it does this, so I opened up the cover and sure enough his, his front sprocket was just toast, it was completely worn out, so we tried to get that fixed in Cincinnati, that didn't work out, it was going to take him too long to get the part, and it would have just held us back too much, so we decided to just limp the bike to New York, and that was about it. We got into town probably about two and a half, three weeks ago now. Just been super busy with family and finishing up the, uh, the book project that I've been working on. Uh, it's been really nice to see family. It's been hot and humid out here, which is a little rough. I am looking forward to get back to the uh, dry heat of the desert. I would truly, honestly, I would take 120 degrees dry heat over 90s and humid. Uh, it is just such a difference. But making the best of it 
and enjoying my time with my family and all of that and looks like I'll be heading back out west in about two more weeks so uh, give or take and that that ride home I'm really looking forward to because there isn't the same tr time restraints that we had coming out here so we're gonna you know take more of a scenic route pretty much avoid the highways the whole way back and, and just have a nice trip so that was kind of it it was a little bit uneventful um, but it was a good trip and Bob and I had a good time and he's been with his family I've been with my family and that's kind of it as far as trip updates so as far as what it's like out there right now um, basically our strategy was you know we were coming to see family we didn't want to bring anything with us we didn't want to get anybody sick so we were just being really super careful it wasn't my intention to come out here this was not my plan but for whatever you know whatever it's worth I had to come out here <clears throat> and I figured that getting on a bike was much safer than getting on a plane and I would be able to isolate a little bit better so what we did was we obviously had masks with us we had hand sanitizer with us and we were using those both very frequently uh, basically what it was like though is you know we left Arizona we got into New Mexico it was a completely different situation masks were required whereas in Arizona they weren't uh, restaurants were closed Arizona they were open uh, and a couple other things were different you get to the next state and again it's like a totally different situation it almost appears as if you're traveling across several countries it is just it's wild the difference from state to state and sometimes even from town to town uh, but basically it's all very manageable and you can be as safe as you want or whatever you're comfortable with um, wear a mask wherever you want or, or don't if that's what you choose to do I'm not gonna tell you what to do uh, I did use hand sanitizer every time I got gas or went into a store or just pretty much constantly using hand sanitizer and washing my hands as often as possible uh, not really interacting with too many people and something else about this trip because we were on such a time crunch we were staying in hotels the whole time uh, we didn't camp once coming out here so I can't say too much about what it's like camping as you make your way across the United States although as far as camping goes in Arizona when I left uh, all of the established campgrounds were still closed which meant that all of the dispersed camping was absolutely packed it was mobbed it was super hard to find places to camp it wasn't impossible just very very difficult to find places to camp so uh, that was my experience in Arizona and I would assume it's pretty much the same everywhere else because everybody was just dying to get out of their house go camping you know go isolate out in the woods and, and at least get out of the house uh, I think as established campgrounds start to open that will alleviate some of the crowds in the dispersed camping areas because usually those are the places you go to get away from the crowds as far as the hotels go basically it was pretty safe um, you know there a lot of hotels would you know leave a room empty for a certain amount of time before they even clean it and then leave it empty again for a certain amount of time before they rent it out to somebody uh, some of them were just kind of revolving people through uh, but all the precautions and everything were in place so I always felt like I was being pretty careful at staying at hotels as far as pricing on hotels they are the exact same as they were before all of this as far as pricing on fuel it is much much cheaper it's an excellent time to be out burning gasoline because it is so cheap right now uh, and as far as food goes this was the one thing that has just gotten so much more expensive and understandably so if you're at a restaurant that's only serving 50% capacity of course they have to make up for that money somewhere but we were finding that going out to eat or getting takeout or any kind of food situation was just it was way more expensive than we were used to but that was kind of offset by the inexpensive fuel so that's kind of you know things that have changed pricing wise uh, what it's like logistically and that's kind of it I mean you can you can definitely be out there there's nothing really necessarily stopping you from doing that I'm not promoting that you do that but everybody's gonna make decisions for themselves and if you have a trip planned and you're planning on you know getting out there and riding around on your bike this is kind of what you can expect at least from my experience so it is possible to do this safely and you know that's kind of it so you know whether the virus is real or not whatever you believe uh, logistically things have certainly changed so just have a mask with you have hand sanitizer with you and be prepared to wear the mask if a uh, business is requiring it 
or if a city or town is requiring it. And if you get somewhere where you're not comfortable, or you think, you know, they're not really doing the right thing here, this feels too risky, don't be afraid to just go a little bit further because town to town and state to state, things get very different. So that is kind of it. Uh, one more thing as far as updates go. I am getting real, real close with the book. As some of you may know, pre-sales are officially open. I will leave a link down below for that. Uh, if you want to get a signed copy, uh, at least in the United States, I'm shipping them out. I'm not shipping them internationally right now because it is so expensive. However, a lot of you have been asking me, uh, will it be available you know, in Canada or Europe or wherever? And it definitely will. Once I make the book public on Amazon, it's actually going to be shipped in the country that it's ordered from, so shipping isn't international. You're just paying to get it shipped from your country to where, wherever you are. So that's kind of it for that. Uh, if you're curious about the book and you want to learn more about that, like I said, link down below. Anyways, that's it for today. If you guys have any questions for me, video topic ideas you want to see, things like that, let me know. Uh, any more questions about what it's like out there, anything maybe I missed that you're curious about, definitely let me know. And I will talk to you guys very soon. I hope you're all having an awesome summer. Uh, getting a little riding in if you can. Uh, and that's about it. So I will talk to you guys very soon. Ride safe.